We turn right now to Yemen, where anti-government protests are swelling amidst U.S.-backed President Ali Abdullah Saleh's refusal to step down after more than 32 years in power. On Monday, dozens were wounded after state forces opened fire on demonstrators in Marib province. The local governor was stabbed in a confrontation with protesters. Meanwhile, three soldiers were reported killed while confronting an anti-government protest in a northern province. At least 10 protesters were wounded. Five people were also injured when Yemeni forces fired bullets and tear gas at a peaceful rally in the city of Mokalla. At least seven protesters have died in clashes since Saturday, raising the death toll so far to more than 30. As the unrest grows, the Yemeni government is cracking down on international media coverage of the protests. Four journalists, including two U.S. citizens, were arrested and deported on Monday. The journalists say Yemeni forces raided their shared apartment in the capital, Sana'a, and told them they were being expelled for their coverage of the demonstrations. Two foreign journalists were also deported on Saturday. For more on Yemen, we're joined right now by Atiyaf al-Wazir, a Yemeni activist and blogger who's been participating in the protests since January. She's part of a youth coalition that is drafting the, quote, principles of the revolution. Atiyaf, uh, welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you for joining us. Uh, talk about what's happening right now uh, on the ground in Yemen. Democracy protests are continuing in Sana'a and have expanded nationwide. And what most people thought couldn't happen is really happening in Yemen. People are in the streets calling for change peacefully, despite the fact that many Yemenis are armed. Yet they've resisted and are continuing to uh, resist using their weapons for the past five weeks, at least majority of the time. Even when uh, they were violently attacked with live ammunition, also attacked with uh, excessive use of tear gas. Uh, like you said, over 30 people ha were killed, including a 13-year-old boy in Mukalla from a gunshot. And this is really only serving to empower and strengthen the movement. And what's really amazing is that uh, this is becoming a civic experience. It's better than a thousand uh, awareness-raising programs. When you go to the squares of change, you know, you have people from various backgrounds. You have the Islamists, you have the uh, socialists, you have men, women, uh, Houthis, uh, Slahis. Everybody is in the same place, interacting together, and have, they've put their differences aside and are demanding only one thing, an end to Saleh's corrupt one-family military rule. Uh, when you're in the square, you feel like it's a new Yemen. Uh, youth from uh, various coalitions, from various backgrounds, are coming together. You know, they're they're talking about what do we want next? Uh, what what do we want from this uh, movement, from this revolution? What do, what do we mean by an end of the regime? What kind of regime do we want? What are the future plans? There's really uh, no turning back to this. You know, um, uh, so far there's an increase in number of uh, resignation from GPC members, an increase in number of protesters on the ground, despite, again, the violence. Every time there's violence, there's more people. Uh, people I know that are apolitical, you know, they, they never participate in protests, joined after the violent attacks. They donated blood donated food. These are their brothers, these are their sisters, and they're seeing this and they're joining. Uh, more tribal members are joining as well, and this is a, a pressure point for the government. So there's really no turning back, and uh, the U.S. should really take that into consideration. Salah is leaving sooner or later, and they need to be outspoken about the, the tear gas that was used that said that was made in USA. They need to address this. They need to address the people because the people are going to be there, and and they should really address that. We're also joined by Gregory Johnson, a former Fulbright Fellow in Yemen. He works in the Near Eastern Studies Department at Princeton University. He's joining us right now from Cairo. Uh, Gregory, put this in context. Uh, what is the U.S. role in all of this, and uh, what is happening right now uh, internally in Yemen? Well, for the U.S., there's not a whole lot they can do. Um, we saw the U.S. ambassador give a couple of statements recently in the press. The U.S. has continued to press both the Yemeni government and the opposition to negotiate, and that's just not something that the opposition in Yemen is, is willing to do. They see Saleh really at the weakest point in his 32 years of rule, and they're, they're unwilling to throw him a lifeline. And so the, the U.S. is kind of stuck right now in supporting the person that it has backed for the past three decades um, and, and really not knowing what comes after him. And what would you expect to happen if Saleh does fall? 
Um, well, I think the, the most likely thing that would happen is that some sort of a, a council of, of uh, around five individuals, five to seven people, old wise men of Yemen, would, would come together um, as sort of a trusteeship to try to steer Yemen through the, the next few months before they can put in a new constitution and have new elections. Um, that's, that's probably the most uh, likely scenario, at least at this point. But anything that happens going forward, any violence... Um, any any protracted clashes could could change that significantly. And we're going to end with Atiyah Al Wazir uh, on the phone from Yemen. What should people understand most about what's happening right now? These protests are growing increasingly uh, violent. The crackdown is becoming more violent. What is going to happen in these coming days? I suspect uh, probably more violence, but the, the people will continue to go to the streets. The people will not stop. The movement has started, and there's no turning back to this. And I, I just wish that the U.S. administration would address these violent uh, attacks, condemn them, because it is against the U.S. principles and values, and it's really reflecting negatively on U.S. reputation. We're going to have to leave it there. Atiyaf al-Wazir is a Yemeni activist and blogger who's been participating in the protests since January. She's part of a youth coalition uh, in Yemen. And Gregory Johnson joining us from Cairo, a former Fulbright fellow in Yemen. He works in the Near Eastern Studies Department at Princeton University, a Ph.D. candidate there. That